Hey there, I'm your host Lissawi and in today's video I will show you how to create a turret. So if I go and hit the play button, this turret uses two events on begin overlap and on pawn sensing. So if I get within range, he'll notice me and start shooting me and same goes with the pawn sensing. So he'll just keep a track of where I'm going and he'll continue until uh, unless I'm out of sight. So let's get out of sight real quick and then he'll stop. Now we can also rotate this turret on the z-axis and you can clamp this value if you think this is too extreme. And with all that said, let's begin. For this project, I'll be using the third person template. And with that, let's go to the content drawer, right click and create a new folder for our turret. So I'll simply call this turret. And inside, let's create another folder for our bullet. So I'll make this in a separate folder. And once inside, let's right click, go to blueprint class, and this will be of type actor. Now for the name, I'll do BP underscore bullet. And once inside, we need to add a static mesh. Now, if you have anything of your own, you can add that. I'll simply be using the cylinder over here. So let's get that. And for the size, this is quite big to 0 0.05. Let's copy this value and paste it on everything else. And we can also rotate this to be minus 90. So that's looking good. And one more thing, select it as self over here and let's do a projectile movement. Now for the projectile movement, initial speed, you can play around with it. But on the very beginning, what I showed you, this was a value of 3000. And don't forget to change the projectile gravity scale. Otherwise, your bullet will fall to the ground pretty quickly. Now for this, I'll do something like 0 0.05. So eventually, gradually, it will um, go down. So you can exit this. I think that's pretty much it for the bullet. And if we go back a folder inside here, let's create another folder, calling it the turret or the turret tower, whatever you like. And inside, let's create a blueprint class, which be which will be of type pawn. Now for this, I'll call it BP underscore turret. So inside of our pawn, we want to hit add and select the static mesh. And this will be called base. And this will serve as the base of our turret. And for this, I'll select a cylinder, having it at 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.5 again, and 1 here, or 0 0.1 rather. So that's our base. Then I'll select self and do a static mesh. And this will be my tower. And over here, I'll do a second cylinder being 0 0.3. 0.3 once again and maybe like 3 on this value or 0 0.5 0 0.4 i think is going to be okay with me so now uh select the tower and just drag it into the base and the reason i done it this way is so i can easily select the scale otherwise it would be um, a little bit differently calculated now select itself again and let's do a another static mesh and this will be our top. So you could call this the gun. And for the static mesh itself, I want this to be a square. And if we drag it out, we can see that it is very small or no. Oh, it is very big, actually. So let's make this 0 0.3 as well. Uh, 0 0.3. And for this, let's say 0 0.1 which is pretty good for me. So let's just drag that here. And I will disable this. Let's drag it out like so, and like this. And I think this is going to be okay with me and bring it a little bit down, just like so. So that's looking pretty good. So the next thing we can do, get the gun, put it into the tower, select self again, and let's add another static mesh. And this will be a cylinder as well, but I'll call it the barrel. And over here, let's select the cylinder and I'll do 0 0.1, 0 0.1. That's even pretty big. So 0 0.8 maybe, or 0 0.08. Doesn't let me, 0 0.08. Yes, it does, 0 0.08. And let's do something like 0. 8 as well, 0 0.5, that's a little better. 
So then we will rotate this also 90 degrees. And there we go. We have our barrel. So we can have two barrels like so. So that will be barrel number uno and barrel number dos. We can just duplicate this guy, calling it barrel two. And let's just rename this to barrel one as well. Uh, does it let me? Yes, it does. Okay, so uh, barrel one, we can drag out like so. And there we go. We have our turret looking pretty good. So another thing, let's add the spawn location for our bullet. So let me just quickly drag these uh, under the gun like so. And if you select self, we can do something called a scene. And select that and essentially call it bullet spawn one. And if we duplicate this, it will be bullet spawn two. So one drag into barrel one and two drag into barrel two. And of course, adjust these so bullet spawn two is here, and I want this to be about there. So same for one, drag it out and adjust it about there. But if you want them to be exactly the same, we can delete the one and duplicate this guy, calling it one, dragging it under barrel one and just moving it to the side. So that way they're at the same height. And with that said, that's our turret done. So we can compile. And let's go to the event graph. So inside of here, we can actually delete these. And one more thing that we will need is a pawn sensing. So just get pawn sensing in your turret. We can leave the name as it is. But essentially, we want to right click, add event, add on C pawn. So from here, I want to cast to my character. So drag out from here or here actually. And let's do cast to third person character since that's what I am using. And for the object, simply connect the pawn to the object. So from here, we want to get actor location. And we also want to get the location of the turret. So get actor location like so. And then from the top one, we want to do find look at rotation and connect the target into the get actor location. That will be the third person. Then from here, drag out and type in or interp2. And for this, actually, let's break this. This will go into the target. And for the current, I want to do get actor rotation or OT. There we go. Rotation, plug that into there. Now, for the delta time, we can do get world delta seconds. And for the interp speed, of course, the lower the value, the slower, the higher the value, the faster. So I found if you multiply this value, now, I believe there's a cap on this, so it only goes to a certain extent. But in the tutorial, I had it 20 multiplied by 5. So that was working pretty good for me. We can also split this since we all only want the Z and the white values. So if we select, you want to select this guy. So this is our tower. So in the event graph, select the tower and do set world low, set world rotation. That's what I want. And if we break the spin, this will rotate on the Z and this will also rotate on the Y. And um, we can clamp the Y value if you really want to, just to show you how this would work. So if we clamp this now, it's not going to look very pretty, but minimum, for example, we could say like minus 20 and max, we could do also like minus 20 or plus 20 rather. So that will work good for us. And the next we want to do set actor rotation just like so connecting this into here and we also we only want the z value to go into there so drag that plug it into there so this will be one part of the code and i actually need to create a sequence so create a sequence this will go into here and zero will go into our set world rotation for our tower and then for one we will do a retriggable delay like so plugging this into here and this is essentially how fast the bullets will spawn so if you want them to spawn really quickly do 0 0.1 and on completed we will do um, spawn actor from class and the actor that we want to spawn is of course our bullet so just search for your bullet now the spawn transform that's why we needed the scene so we have bullet one so get a world 
transform like so plug it into there and then for our second bullet all we have to do is copy this copy this actually paste it here like so and then let's get our scene two plug it into there get world rotation so that way we spawn the first bullet and we also spawn the second bullet now one thing remaining would be to add the collision uh, begin overlap so we don't have this at the moment so let's just select self and add a sphere collision like so calling it collision that's going to be good for us and we can set this to be for example like 800 now that's pretty generous and that's pretty big so actually let's do 500 that's a little better so compile in the event graph we want to right click on our collision add event and add on component begin overlap so from here you want to cast your actor once again so cast to third person character and with that we want to do get actor get actor location and we also want the get actor location of the turret like uh, at the very beginning and we want to do from the top find look at rotation plugging the target into our third person character and from here we will break these and we of course just want the y and the z value so right click do set actor rotation breaking the spin plugging uh, z into z y into y and this will go into the execution pin so this should be all of our code let's compile save and see how this will work so i placed my turret here but of course you're uh, free to place it wherever you want and let's just center align this and we can reduce the font sensing to be a little smaller let's do like 70 and one thing i should mention the sensing interval this is how often this event will fire change it to like 0 0.1 for uh, the best effect let's compile and save and if i get within this range it should turn towards me and start shooting so let's see how this works there we go turns towards me and it's pretty fast so you, of course you can customize the speed of the bullet and the rotation speed so guys with all that said um let's actually turn off the collision for the bullet um so let's go turret bullet and otherwise your camera is going to uh, jiggle a little bit so select bullet type in collision and just disable the collision no collision and if you wanted to do damage on the bullet just add a sphere and then you would do the apply damage on event begin overlap you know so guys with all this said thank you so much for watching if you liked the video leave a like if you didn't leave a dislike and as always happy developing